once you've gone through and figured out all the sort of basic goals, especially regarding sustainability issues, uh, it's important to document those in some way that you are creating a tool for the conversation. So the conversation is partly between uh, the design team and the owner. The conversation might be uh, useful for the owner to the funders. It might be between uh, different parts of the design team. But you need to have the tool by which you can have that conversation. And so some sort of documentation of the goals that have been set and the opportunities that are there on these sites. So, uh, for example, you know, you might be thinking about, all right, here's our location of our potential project, right? So it's just a simple idea of a location in place, and we start thinking about it in plan, and we start saying, all right, well, here's the run of the sun, uh, so we have uh, potential for morning light issues here. We're going to call that out in one way. We have afternoon light in other ways, which maybe we're a little worried about. So, because we're worried about the heat gain that's going to come from that. So maybe we start thinking about, well, this is the logical place for our protection. So we're finding ways to block the sun uh, with trees or with uh, structures or with trellises or something. And so we're kind of graphically showing that in some way. And maybe we're thinking about, well, the prevailing winds are coming this way. What issues can we do with that? You know, do we need to find ways to block it? Do we want to find ways to actually accept it and turn it into a positive, like maybe uh, create uh, wind energy, something like that? Uh, so this is that diagram that would start to run through all of those issues. Uh, you know, all right, we're talking about geothermal. Well, where, where are the opportunities for, for putting those uh, pipes in the, in the ground? Are we going to run them horizontally or vertically? You know, where, where would we put uh, uh, solar panels? Like, are we going to put them on the roof? And so there's a logical location there. Or is that not a good location for whatever reason? Like, what, what about it graphically can we use to explain the positive or negative of that location? So we're just finding ways to document all of those issues. And you're documenting them graphically so that uh, there's a very clear understanding. You're also going to write notes and maybe a report and all of that. But there needs to be a graphic documentation of this as a set of systems. So this is not necessarily a site plan. This is the idea of, this is sort of more sort of conceptual idea of what you're talking about. So it's uh, graphic in nature. It's not hard-lined in that sense. I mean, it can be made out of any, you can do it in a program, you can do it in 3D, you can do it in, you know, whatever you want. It could be a model that you take a photograph of. Uh, but the idea is that you're creating a tool that is a conversation starter so that everybody can agree. Like, all right, uh, this is going to be an issue here. Should we put a series of trees there? Maybe this is a place for a grove of trees. Or maybe instead of that, we're going to do a series of trellises that are going to be a place where people could sit underneath, right? That kind of design thinking comes out of this sort of uh, graphic tool. It's the step before you actually get into designing the the actual thing the actual object this is you're not designing yet you are talking about generic issues and how those generic issues impact this particular site uh, so all of these different ways of thinking about it will find some sort of way of approaching it um, i've been doing it in plan but it, it, maybe a section is more appropriate uh, depends on what the issues are for that site and that way that you're thinking about it. Maybe both are, are needed. Uh, maybe some 3D model is, would be appropriate. You could start looking at uh, sunlight over a span of day uh, so you see where the, the pros and cons are of uh, how much sunlight we're getting uh, just basically onto the site and in, uh, in this place. You could start mapping where the shadows are from buildings next door or large trees. Uh, especially if I'm doing something like a school, say, I might think, well, the sun in the morning is different than the sun in the afternoon, or the sun uh, from this big building is blocking this one area. Let's not put the playground there. Let's put the playground where it gets mostly sun all day. So you're sort of mapping these uh, big ideas, but you're not designing anything yet, right? This is that early phase of, uh, of schematic thinking before you really get into the design. This is what is sort of that programming phase. 
whole idea of programming is you're getting really detailed in what you want and what the goals are and what the analysis is, but you're not designing yet. You're using that flip from programming into schematic design as the moment where you go from what's, what's the idea to what's the design idea, right? What's the thing that backs up the issue? Like, we want to block the wind. We want to accept the wind. We want to block the sun. We want to accept the sun. Whatever it happens to be, what those issues are, you're talking about them abstractly, but you're finding graphic tools for representation. And then when you get into that schematic design, now we're actually designing in a way that matches to those ideas. The whole point of this is if you start designing too early, if you actually start into a site plan too early, you lose opportunity to think about these things abstractly. You might just kind of get in your head, oh, that trellis, I really want to do the trellis. Well, maybe the trellis is a good idea, maybe it's not a good idea. Maybe it's one of those things that if you were thinking about it abstractly first, you might find that it really didn't need to be a built structure. Maybe it could just be a tree or something and you just have a, have a tree planted. Or maybe there's already a tree there and you can find a way to position the building near that tree. So you're finding the design after you've thought about these things from this sort of uh, general sense and this sort of graphic, simple way of describing it. The whole point is to be able to have that conversation and then the design comes out of the program and out of this sort of site analysis. So you've done all that work and then the design comes from it. If you design too fast, if you design before you've done that, you're making decisions before you really have any of the information and you're losing those opportunities for uh, more kinds of input.